Okay, so. Ha! It doesn't work at all. This is just where it's supposed to work. Okay. Um, all right, so. What we're going to be going over in this our session is first, you know, what is less? How do we use it? And then actually using it in Joomla and how Joomla uses it. So when you're talking about less, the first thing that you're really looking at is seeing it as dynamic CSS. It is something that allows you to, to do easy customization. You can reuse a lot of different um, code that you've already written, a lot of CSS that you've already written. And it brings in the power of variables where, and they call it variables, if you're a programmer, it's, you know, they're really constants, but um, it, <laughs> it lets you define something and then use that um, other places so you don't have to keep repeating it or remembering it. And if you change it, you change it in one place. So it's a superset of CSS. The big difference between taking a CSS file and a less file is you change the .css to .less. <laughs> okay? In other words, anything that is a valid CSS statement is a valid less statement. All less is is it adds additional things that you can do within the CSS. So what the pre-processing is, is it takes this less file and it turns it into a CSS file. It just take, takes these extra commands and does things to turn them into CSS. Or to take commands that are CSS that have little bits of you know, less in them and turn that into an actual CSS. There are two different ways that you can do this. You can do it on the client side. In other words, you can have the browser do it for you. And that's done with, if you go to the website lesscss.org, you can download from there um, some JavaScript that will actually do this for you. And it's done on the fly every time somebody looks for something on here, every time it has to create the CSS, it'll look at that less file and it'll turn it into a CSS file. The way you do that is in your um, HTML doc or your index.php doc, whatever it is, up in the header, you'll define a link just like you would a CSS file. The only difference is your href happens to be um, commenting that it's a less file. Other than that, this is exactly the same as if you were doing a CSS um, file. And then you have to have a script in there that it uses the less.js. But isn't that still slower? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There, this, normally you only really want to, want to do this uh, when you're developing something, possibly. Okay. It's one way of doing it when you're developing it. So that you can just keep changing your less file and then see the changes happen here. Uh, and some people do this. I mean, it is depending on what your site is like. In some cases, it's the performance hit is not enough to matter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do it, but some people do. Mm -hmm. So, But that is the, the big issue with it. And you, this JavaScript file you get from that lesscss.org. So I get one more question. Mm -hmm. um, how backwards compatible is this with older browsers? Um, it is fairly backward compatible. It will not go to IE6. Most of IE7 is compatible with. Um, but that's another reason why if you do it the second way I'm going to show that it works better because then all you're loading is straight CSS. You don't load less at all. Okay. Because the other way of pre-processing is you can do it on the server side. And that's where, you know, on your, your server or your local computer or someplace, you actually compile and do that once. And then what you load into the computer, you know, into the website is just straight CSS. 
So there are actually a number of different, um, you know, compilers or processors. You could do. There's one in PHP, and there are some in JavaScript with Node. Uh, Joomla itself, when it creates its files from less to uh, CSS uses a PHP uh, processor. When I'm doing them personally, I, I'll tend to use Node's JavaScript one, unless it's for something that's actually for Joomla. Um, so the way that you would do this, is I'll just explain the Node one, is first you have to install Node.js onto your computer. And that you can find going to the HTTP nodejs.org. And then you have to install less, because less is separate from um, Node.js is sort of a server-side JavaScript program that you can add additional pieces to it. So what you need to do is when you install the, the Node.js, you then have to add in less. And this N, uh, NPM is installed when you install the, the Node.js, and it is just an installer. It basically does these commands. So here it's using the, the install command going locally, and it's going to install the less component. So this you do one time when you're setting up your computer to be able to do this stuff. And then what you would do is you process your CSS files. And that would look something like this. This is being done on the command line right now. There are programs you can pull down that will give you a GUI interface that you can, can do it that way too. But this is basically what you would be doing each time. <clears throat> you made changes to your template, less file or whatever to compile it into your template.css, you'd just be doing this one thing. So these one and two, steps one and two, set up your computer to be able to do it. And step three is just what you would be doing on an ongoing basis. And there are different ways that I'm not going to go into right now that you can <coughs> automate this so that when you make a change to your CSS, it would actually make the change automatically to recompile all your less files. So that does that on your computer and then it loads it into the template like a regular CSS file. What this, what this does, this command itself, um, is, well, the way that this is set up is in your, you're in your command line and you're in the, the CS, your CSS folder and you're just saying, oh, go out to the less folder that's in my template and grab the template.less file and recompile it and call it template.css. So this has just created your template CSS file. And so all you do is you would load that like you would any other CSS file. Okay. In this particular case, I'm going to go over what's in here. But this contains everything. This contains all your bootstrap stuff. It contains all of your GUI stuff. It contains all of um, your particular code, CSS code that you would use for your template. So it's, it's one thing that you would, would stick in there, just like you would normally load any CSS file. Right. And so the difference with this, doing it on the server side, is when it goes to the browser, it's ordinary. It's just ordinary CSS. So you've taken all the complexity or anything different, and you're just doing it on your computer so you don't have to worry you know, does that browser support this or that or doesn't it? And you don't have to worry about every time somebody goes in to access it, that it has to do this compile. You've just done it once. Now, when, if, you know, if, if the pre-processing, this is the first time you've heard about it, you know, you may not, and you've heard about it because of Bootstrap and all of that, you may think that, oh, less is, you know, the only thing out there. But actually, there are other CSS processors out there. And SAS is probably the biggest and the, the most well-known of them. So a lot of questions we get is, you know, why did we go with, you know, less and not SAS? And Bootstrap itself is the one who made that decision. I mean, they went with less. And there are SAS versions of Bootstrap, but 
with anything like that, you're usually better off going with the original, because that's the one that's kept up to date, the quickest and everything like that. So Joomla went along with the, the standard one, which was using less. So the reason that the uh, Bootstrap people pick less over SAS is that um, the, the time trials that they were using on it, less was just much faster than, than SAS was. And the, um, the JavaScript that they used was, was better and that uses a CSS syntax so that at the time SAS used its own syntax that was not like CSS so you had to learn a whole new thing, a, um, a way of coding for that. Whereas with less, you could use your normal CSS that that stayed the same and then you just had additional things that would add on to it. So that's why they decided to go with less. All right. So now actually going in and seeing, you know, what is less and what do you do with it and how does it work? So I mentioned the variables or constants. <laughs> and what they are is you define once and use many. So one time you'll define what this is and then you can use it whenever you want to. You'll recognize them because it has this big at sign. So you might see something like at text color, colon, the pound sign, 2C, 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 um, semicolon. So as most of you will recognize, that's like a, a dark gray, okay? So it looks just like CSS, except it's got this at sign, right? So what this has done is it says, basically, anytime you see text color, that's what I want you to substitute in. So when the preprocessor comes through and it sees at text color, it immediately just, instead of that, it plops in the uh, pound sign 2C, 2C, 2C. So for example, you could define, here's my P, I want color equal to at text color. So it preprocesses it, and you've got color equals pound 2C, 2C, 2C. Obviously, if that's all you're doing, it's a lot more writing. But if you're using text color throughout all of your files, and then you decide to change it, you change it right there and recompile it and it's changed it everywhere. You could also do something like here you've got your H2, you want the color to be text color, and you want your border to be text color as well. So you can just use that. I happen to call it text color, but you can use that wherever. So what you're doing here is you're saying I want the color of my H2 to be the normal text color I'm using, the normal color I would use for this, and I want the borders to be in the same color. So I got a question. Can you nest um, variables, constants, inside of others? Let's say I wanted to have a standard border, so just, at just standard border. Hold, hold that thought. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so that's kind of the basic thing on that. Then what you have are you have what are called mixins. And mixins are a little bit more complicated. Um, what they really are are like shorthand classes. Okay? And you'll see them with the dot, just like you would normally do classes. So let's say you've got one that you're just calling it dot rounded and you've got something in here. Now, that's just standard CSS. So what it's really it's interesting is what we're going to do with it. So I'm giving you an example which, with the way browsers are right now, it's getting less and less likely in the way that, that um, tastes change, you know, CS3, CSS3, the way it added all of this stuff that everybody wanted, the rounded corners and the drop shadows and all of that, and now that it's finally getting into most of our browsers, everything's turned upside down, we want everything flat, and who cares about drop shadows, and we want square <laughs> corners and everything like that. But anyway. <laughs> Um, one of the problems that you would have with that is anytime you wanted to use it, you'd have to use like three or four or five different lines in order to make sure you covered all the different ones. So you'd put the web kit in. I want my border radius to be at five. And then I want it in Firefox. And I really want to have it in the Microsoft yeah. IE. And I really, Opera, you know, I really would like it in Opera. And then some of these might actually go and start using CSS3. So let's do it the CSS3 way. <laughs> so you go into your um, 
you know, your CSS, and you're writing this for every single time you want to do something like that. And so what you do instead, if you are using less, that's what you then do. Okay? So you remember, back here, we defined rounded as being all of these. Now when you're in your, going to the point where you're actually going to be writing and using all your CSS, We just go to, it's just going to go around it, okay? So all it does is going to substitute it. So now what happens, because we're using this class inside a class, which normally you wouldn't do with CSS, when Les processes it, it just goes and finds it. Oh, you define class dot rounded as this, so we'll just shove that in there in place of the rounded. Now, you can do it as additional things, like this is what we did first. But that can just be one thing that happens to be in something else. So that one just has rounded corners. This one we want to add some padding to it. You can also do parameters. You'll notice it has these um, parentheses, which if you've done any programming, you kind of are familiar with functions. And things are going to go inside that. So let's say we've got rounded again. and. Again, it looks just like the other one, except before we start our curly braces, we have this thing that says at radius, and you've got a 5px. Now, this is actually two things. What this is doing is it says, I want you to know I'm bringing in something called at radius. And when you define it, you can either say specific, you can say I want to do um, dot rounded, and you can give it something. But if you don't give it anything, it's going to use the 5px, okay? So when we do this, we use the at radius going down instead of, remember on the first one we put 5px here. So now we're just saying we're going to use that first argument, okay? And now we use it again. Now this is going to be exactly the same as the first one because we had defined radius as being equal to 5px. But if instead what we do is when we call it, we put some parentheses around it, it's going to use 3px. And because you gave it something here, instead of just leaving it blank, it's going to use that 3px. So this is going to be the, use the 3 pixel rounded corners instead of the 5 pixel rounded corners. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, See if I can instead of parentheses, it takes the parentheses over what the right. LDS says. Be because, right, because what we, we had put in there, um, I know, I can't go back, but um, I can't go forward. Right, because when, when we had defined it, we had the P rounded, and we said at radius equals 5 pf. And what that is, is it's putting a default in. So it's basically saying, if you give me something here, I'll take it. If you don't give me anything, like this one doesn't, then use 5px. So when it went down here and listed those five and had at radius, it was using either what you gave it, if you gave it something, or it was defaulting to the 5px. So that's why these would be 5px and these would be 3px. Just yeah. to iterate, basically the 3 pixel overrides the 5 pixel. Right, because the, the 5 pixel is only going to be used if you don't give it anything. Um, Try the command tab back to the. I think you unactivated the window. But what's funky is. All right, so operations is going to come next. We did variables, we did some mixing things. Now we're going to do some math. We get to do plus and minus and times and divide. And we get to decide what we want our hierarchy to be, what we want to do first. So let's say we have something that's a base margin is 15 px. You'll notice it's at sign, so we're going to do, this is a variable we're going to be using. So anytime we do that, it, just think 15 px. So let's say we have this box one um, <coughs> class, thank you. And we're using, so the margin bottom is going to be the at base margin, 15 px, plus 20 px. So that's going to end up being 35px. Yes. Will it do mods so you could do the zebra striped rows? 
Uh, you, you just, all you need is tables dash striped and it'll do them automatically for you. And will it do mod anyway for some um, other purpose? I'm not sure if it does mod or not. I have to look it up. I think it, I think it might do percent as mod. Are these at um, declaration? <coughs> are they all, are you going to add them all like? Normally what you do file. is I'll show you how it works, okay. but the, the normal way that it's done is you have a file that's called variables.less. Okay. You throw them all in there yeah. so that when you want to make changes, you know you can just go there and that change one them file. all. Okay. Uh, but you could put them anywhere, but I would say best you practice. You could put them in the same put them where file you find them. wanted to. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you the sort of the standard structure yeah. of how we're putting them together. And then you can get really complicated and weird with it too, if you want to. Is you could take, um, here's your, you know, I actually think you can do ceilings and floors too. So, um, so I bet you can do the mods. Um, okay, so the at base, 5%. And so you want, this filler is gonna be your at base, times two, so you're doing 5% times two is your filler. And so then you're gonna come down and you want your height to be 100% divided by two plus whatever your filler is. Wow. <laughs> oh. yeah. Now, I'm not gonna go into why you wanna do that. <laughs> um, but you know, hey, maybe your base or your filler, one of those gets, gets has a little media query around it. <laughs> That's where you're gonna handle your margins. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so the, the math has to be inside the parentheses? Right now, the way it currently is, it only has to be inside the parentheses if you're trying to define the hierarchy. However, in the newer version they're working on, it's going to require that math is always in the parentheses. So I just get started and just put it in the parentheses. Okay. And if you forget the semicolon, uh, is that going to cause an error? Like where you have margin bottom, blah, 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 you know, plus 20 and no semicolon. Um, that's the... That's a little anti-typo. Well, yeah, actually that is an anti-typo. That definitely, yeah. Okay. If I'd forgotten that one, it wouldn't matter. Forgetting that one is a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Straight, yeah, standard CSS should have happened there, so. <laughs> so if you wanted to use parens to uh, define your order of operations there, could you put them in? So, I mean, if you wanted that to be 100 well, divided by 2 plus filler. Yeah, yes. put as many parens as you want. Go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So let's try some other things. We've got our link color here. Okay. I think you guys are going to like this one. Um, <laughs> all right. So this you've seen this before, right? We're just going to take this is our A. Our, our link is going to be our link color. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. All right. We want to hover. What What do you want to often want to do when you want to hover something? Okay. You just want to make it darker the color or do something yeah, like that you know maybe the background color or something or, or or just fade what the link is so you can just take the black on color and add a little oh, bit of dark nice. to it yeah, oh, wow. no more trying to go in and figure out what color do I want that's going to be a little so bit that's, darker that's sort of like a gray overlay on yeah. it or something yes oh my gosh. <laughs> and just hold that thought. I got something even better. That's okay. So we also have functions. Some of these are built in. Again, we're going to use our little parentheses like we had for our our parameter things. Okay. And so go back. We've got a little link color. Here's our color. We've got the link color. We're using it now. Here is one of the built-in functions. This particular one, let's lighten the link color by 10%. And they've got these, they've got, you can lighten it, you can darken, you can saturate it, to so just make it or desaturate it, fade in, that's like doing transparency stuff, fade in or fade out, they've also got the fade out, so that you can change the transparency of what you've got it. They've got spin, which is imagine the color wheel. You're just changing oh, the color wheel, so let's make a God. complementary color. <laughs> okay? That's wild. That's wild. And there, there are more of them, but I, I, and we can, if we have time at the end, I'll go through the, the rest of them, but that's just uh, show and tell. Show and tell, yeah. yeah. But I figured, like, 
Like this one's going to be happy days. Mm -hmm. This one fading it in, fading it out. Mm -hmm. You mute it. You know, you want to do things muted. And I talked about in Bootstrap, you've got that dot muted. Mm -hmm. But maybe what you want to do is just do a transparency on that to mm -hmm. just fade it real light or something. Mm -hmm. No more trying to figure out what that thing is and change the color on it. I mean, the potential for audience is pretty high on something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, think tell positive. you the truth. <laughs> the ugly is right here on spin, yeah. or maybe the but fade Saturate in, fade out, darken yeah. and lighten mm. is is gonna, yeah. I think, make less ugly than yeah, yeah, because you're usually pretty safe doing that. <laughs> um, okay, so comments. They've got two different ways you can do comments. You've got this normal CSS style, which is. You can go on the multi lines, you've got the slash asterisk, and you just do that. Now, those are included. So, if you do this in a less file, when your CSS file is created, it will include those comments. Okay? And often you, you want that, you know, like, okay, here's my header section, and here's my whatever section. Okay, in fact, here are the header styles for the blog pages. That will go into the CSS file. Now they have another kind of comments that are sort of the single line comments. If, you, if you've used um, PHP, you'll have seen these. These are not included. You know, you create them in your less file and you do not see them when you create the CSS file. So this might be for instructions that you want to do in the less file, but there's no reason to have them in the CSS. And those are just the slash slash. <laughs> you do so, that all the time in CSS. Yeah, but remember, they won't go. They won't get. They won't get moved over to the CSS file. Um, but this would be just override from template. You know, just some instructions in there that you want. Now, um, another thing that gets used a lot in. Do you have a question? What about the pound symbol? Does that have any meaning in less? Uh, well, you mean other than it. Like signifying for that it's like for, for a comment. If it's at the very first character. If it's at the very first character, it's probably part of an ID for pound ID. Good point. Okay. So it's okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know that pound space does anything. I haven't. I wouldn't think so. I'm just curious. They had slash slash if there was a way to do like pound pound and something. Different. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I didn't come across it. Okay. That, that I remember. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just having a... Did I mean include or did I mean import? I meant import. Mm -hmm. I did another Andy moment here. <laughs> um, I said include because that's what it does, but this is really an import. I'm going to have to fix this before I post these slides. These will be on SlideShare, by the way. So, um, so you can do an at import <laughs> and it will include these particular things. You can do either CSS files or you can do less files. And it's the same way that you would do them on in a CSS program. What the difference is, and here's where we're importing that less with the, the variables file that would like would have all of the variables. Um, and you'd import the mixins. The difference here is that because all right, if you're doing this pre-processing on the server side, there's no hit at all for using an add import. And you don't want to use an add import normally in normal CSS files because they, they you have such a performance hit because they take so long to load. But because you're doing this on the server side, by the time it actually is in the CSS file, you don't it's stripped out the add imports and has already replaced them. So you have no performance hits at all doing this. So it makes it a lot easier to organize certain things. So you would end up with like the variables dot less, the mixins dot less, layout dot less, grid dot less, and all compile those to a single file. And this is where you start getting to the point where you could have, you know, like one big file, CSS file that has has everything in it. And it's getting in with using this import here. Okay. Another thing that it lets you do is you can do nesting. Does that look confusing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons for doing nesting is is to make it easier to read and to make it less convoluted and um, just overall simpler. And I think it fails on all counts. <laughs> um, but here's an example: is let's say you have you know the ID of header and that's the color. 
then within that, you have a div that, that has the class of navigation, and you're giving it another size. So your header is this color, navigation, you add the font size, then you've got the logo is going to be a certain width, and then if you've got hovering over the logo, it adds that hover. So all this time, you're, you know, you're adding this pound header, pound header, pound header. It's going there several times. Yeah. So what you can do is, is let's say, okay, pound header, and here's my color. I can nest inside that navigation. And because it's inside these curly braces, it's going to have that pound header automatically in front of it. And so it does the font size. And then we've got the dot logo. Now again, within the dot logo, we're going to add this hover to do this. Now you'll notice this little ampersand. Well, when you had the header navigation and the header logo, those had the space between it. So they were one down below the other. So you had, you had a wrapper that had the header, and then within that was the um, navigation. Um, and the hover for the logo means it attaches directly here. So this is not really nested in. It's another part of that. That's what the ampersand is. Um, my feeling on that is it's, number one, I think it's hard to read. I think it's a little hard to debug because you miss one of these parentheses as to where it is. It's kind of confusing. And if you um, use Firebug, um, Firebug is a bit of an issue or any of those things where you you're find out what your CSS is, that you have a problem you want to change. It gives you the CSS line that it's on. Well, that's going to be the CSS line that is compiled. It's not going to get you back to the less file. There's no way you can get from that back to your less file. So what you normally do is you do a search on whatever the selector is for it and find those. You'll never find it if you've got them all nested. up. So as a habit, I must admit, I personally never nest anything. But you can decide on that. So that's just the debug issues. OK. Um, so before we go on into less for Joomla, did you have any particular questions on that? Or yes? Just to, is less an acronym for something? Um, Something, something style sheet, like yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, no, I, I was just curious. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Okay. Noticed, yes. So let's say you have a template in Joomla, mm -hmm. and great. This is I tried some toying around with less before this presentation, so yeah. I might not do it now this way. Now that I've been to this presentation, but let's say I compile something in less and it's in my template and I go into the Joomla backend, go into my template and I open up the CSS in the template editor there in mm -hmm. Joomla and I change my CSS. That's going to be overwritten next That's time. That's going to be overwritten the next time if you're doing a, it could be, yeah. Anytime you compile less, yeah, if you have less files and you ever want to be able to compile from them, never make changes directly in your CSS files. You know, always make your changes in your less files. Where are they going to live? I'm going to go through, through how that works. Yeah. If you're going to use your less files to create your CSS one time and then never and then ignore them and just work on your CSS, then it doesn't matter. The only time it's an issue is if you recompile over into it. So, okay, so less than Joomla. And just one thing I think I've mentioned before, but I just want to reiterate you don't need to have less for templates. The Ju you don't need it to have bootstrap templates because the Joomla bootstrap files are already processed. They're already compiled. Some of the bootstrap template vendors don't even give you the less files. So they've already done that and they do that and then they hand them the CSS files to you, but they don't give you the less files so that you can go in and make changes and recompile. Um, so you don't need to use less in Joomla, but it's really nice when you can. Okay, so this is how um, Joomla is set up in its whole little GUI section. If you were in my earlier thing, I went over this a little bit. It's got a media folder, and within the media folder, it's got GUI, and there it's got your CSS, fonts, images, JavaScript, and less. 
And if you go into your less folder in here, what you have in there is you have these less files and these less files and these less files and these <laughs> less files and these less files and these less files. So you can see that there are tons of less files. What they've done is they've set it up so that all the little, the different areas, and like the different components as they're called in JavaScript, all have their own less file. And what happens is if you look at the bootstrap file, the bootstrap file consists almost entirely or entirely of at imports. All it does is it's importing all of these different things. So the other Um, that is in there under GUI is that you have the bootstrap dash extended less. And this is where we've put a lot of the, um, the stuff that is particular to Joomla itself is in there. And in, I think I mentioned this already, that the bootstrap dot less contains the at imports of all the other less files. So what you would norm, what you could do is you want if you're going to be doing your less yourself, you would replace the bootstrap.less file that's in the, the media GUI with a template.less file in your template that you'll then compile to template.css. So let's say we have a template that's called my template. I have such an imagination it's <laughs> Okay. So within that, among other things, you're going to have a CSS folder, and it's going to have template.css in it. We may not start out there. We may push it there. But you'll have HTML. You'll have images, blah, blah, blah. You'll have a less folder. You might have others. I didn't have much room on my slide. Within that, you'll have a template.less file and a variables.less. You could put this all into one. We tend to go with keep your variables separate, because that's one. Um, what we're going to do in here is we're going to be doing a lot of imports. So anything that you're not that, that you're not importing directly as is from media, you want to bring a copy of it in here and make your changes in here, and then import it from here. So some of the stuff in here you're going to import from the media file, and the ones you change you'll have a copy in here to make changes to. So then you've got your PHP file, of course. So let's look at the variables.less. This sets up all the variables for your, your template. Um, and you'll copy it from the media slash Dewey slash less and then change it to what you want. We can go in here and we can look at this because it's kind of an interesting file to look at. But it has, um, you know, here's your, here's your link color, here's your border color, here's your nav color, here's your blah, blah, blah color. And then this is defining all those ats and that are used throughout everything. So obviously, if everybody used the same variables folder, all the files would look like bootstrap. So this is the big one that you want to change to make it match you know, your whole color template. So you'll find in there just some examples, like you could put in at body background is going to be um, pound f, 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 f. Here's your text color. Here's your link color. Then you can do your link color hover. It's going to be darkened from your link color here. Um, you're going to be doing your, your sans font family. It's going to be this. And then you'll have one that's, that does have serifs, and that'll be a something else. Um, and then what you'll do is after you've defined that, so that's the, the, the variables that less file. You saw that was a separate one. So we so go. That's, excuse me. So yes. that's one that you copied. You copy it, you bring template. it in, okay. and then you and, and then, then you, you go into it and you change it, it. right? Because yeah. because it'll have everything. Anything you don't want to change, just leave right there with mm -hmm. those, and then you just change what you want to mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. So rather than trying to override what they have, mm -hmm. you're going to be using this one instead mm -hmm. because you just change whatever you want to change. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a little bit like um, template overrides yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this way, so it's when they go and they make changes to the other, it's not going to affect yours. You'll still keep yours. Mm -hmm. um, so when you go into your template.less file, what you're going to do here 
is you're going to import the less files from the media GUI because you saw that I went through there. There's like you know 20 or 30 files in there, all of those separate ones. Mm -hmm. So um, you're going to be importing any of the less files in your template. So those are ones that you copied from GUI and brought over here. And let's say you had one that was sprites and you wanted to change some things because you want to use some uh, a, a different uh, sprite image or something like that. So you would um, br have bring that one in too. And you're gonna then you'd add the styles for your template using less. So um, and when I say here that you're adding the styles for your template using less, you can remember that straight CSS is valid less. So if all you wanted to do was take what they had for Bootstrap, take what we have for Bootstrap, change the link color and the background color and all of those colors and the variables um, that less file and then just take everything else as is and just ch do just straight CSS down there. You could do that, you know? Or you could do that with just using straight CSS but using a couple of those variables like your at link color and your at hover color or something. So you don't have to get fancy with all the other, the other things. So just use, use it when it's helpful and just ignore it when it's not going to be helpful. <laughs> all right, so let's look at, now that I've explained kind of what it would be doing, let's look at a little bit of the actual code. So if you're going in here, the first thing you'd start with is you'd import from Media GUI the reset.less, okay? And if you've set it up so that you've got your, you're in templates, your template name, and then you've got a less folder under that, this will work, this is what you want in order to jump back and grab those, those Media GUI folders, all those dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash will get you there. Where is where are you putting this code? Are you going to show This is in template less. In the template less. In okay. the template less. So that you've got, you know, templates, my templates, the less folder, and within that you've got the template dot less. And then you put this and so you as put the first this in line of yeah. that file. Right. And then what you want to do is you want to import your variables dot less. So you'll see it's the same thing for the import. But instead of going dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash media GUI slash less, you're already in your template less, so you can just put the name of the file and it's going to get it. <coughs> and then what you want to do is start bringing in all the, all the other ones, those 30 million files that I showed you before um, coming in. And what might be easiest to do there is just copy the bootstrap dot less. Um, let's just go into that, copy them all, shove them in here, and that will get them for you. But you want to remember that you need the variables up here near the top. Do you want to do the reset first, and then the variables, and then start bringing in all of the GUI files? Now, um, after you've brought in those, one of the last ones you're going to be bringing in there is the bootstrap, bootstrap da dash extended, because this actually affects some of those bootstrap. So here's what I was talking a little bit before about, you know, what order are some of these coming in. Um, in here, we're not handling that within the header. We're handling it ahead of time with less because we're putting them in the proper sequence within this one file. And we're going to compile them all in that order when we do it so that it's one big thing that comes in. And so that was just, that has to be the other after the others. Um, and now that you put all those here again is where I mentioned before you just start putting your normal stuff. You could do it that you have this as two separate, <coughs> this funky, you know, your normal stuff could be a separate one that you also do an import on. But you might as well just stick it in the same file. But that that basic thing wants to come through, and so that's just you know blah blah. Okay, so then what you do, now that you've created your template.less, is you compile it on the server side in some fashion or another. Okay? So that's in your index PHP? No, that, what no, is that? This, this is a command that you have to run. Um, you have to compile this somewhere mm -hmm. on your server side. So there are a number of ways you can do it. I went over a few of them, but this particular one is where, you know, I go into terminal and I'd run that line. I'd go into terminal, change my directory so that I was in my templates less direct, or my templates 
CSS directory, and then I would just type that in, and it would take my <coughs> templates.less and create my templates.css. One of the things I'm going to be doing uh, is, um, this will only work for those of you who are somewhat close to here, but in June, I think the monthly meeting that we're, we're talking about, um, doing a hands-on less session for actually going in and, and getting computers set up so that you can compile this and actually do hands-on mm -hmm. with um, doing the less compiling. You know, getting, bringing down Node and all of that. Uh, how are the admins? What was that? How? What, what are the admins? Like? You make um, mistakes? It, it, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> kind of wacky. I've, the, I've got a, a little note on one of them when I make a mistake, and that's the one where I've got this in the wrong place and it can't find the valid file where I'm doing it, and I go in there and it has something like capital N dot at bot loof. <laughs> so, it's, it, what it does is it logs the mistakes and what it creates. So that if you go and it creates this template.css and it doesn't look like a CSS file, what it has done there is it's, it's put the error messages logged in there. If there's an error that it can't compile. And its only errors are when it, seems to, when it can't compile. It can't figure it out. So. Um, Okay, and then you would call your CSS template file in your index.php just as you normally would. So, um, let me see if I can. I was going to see, I didn't really set this up to. Um, so here's a kind of a typical, <coughs> you know. You recognize that as your files from Joomla, right? So if we go into media here, and then we come into Jui, and here's the CSS, which we don't really care about. We're going to come down here into less. So here are all those bazillion of less ones, right? And if we go into this one, um, So we come in here and you can see how this is all a bunch of um, imports, right? Import, 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 import. So, um, if I then go to, and, and Protostar is a little bit different, but it happens to be in here, so I'll use that as an example. Um, to templates and I look at protostar I come down into less and you can see it's got a template less it's got a variable that also has to have an icon happens to have an icon move so that means it's making some different stuff doing something different in icon move um, so if we go into like the variables dot less this these are the colors it's decided it wants um, I'm going to skip those for right now so it's doing like Body background is white, the text color is dark gray, the link color is going to be this, the hover is going to darken the link color. Here are my font families. You can see that this is just a bunch of um, different things. Here's, here are the button backgrounds. So remember, um, if you were in my bootstrap class this morning, I was saying, you know, here's success and here's um, warning and here's danger. These are the background colors that are being used for that. So you can just change them in here in the variables.less file. And then when somebody does button dash important, it's going to be um, you know a, a navy blue because that matches the color of your website instead of some funky break blue. So here's where we've gone in. We've made changes that we want to to our basic variables. So now what I'm going to do is, oh no, let's go into here. So here's the template less file. So you can see at the, ver at the start, it's importing the media GUI less the reset. And then it's bringing in the variables.less, which is custom just for this template that you just saw that we just went into. And now it starts in and it's going into all these other media ones that it's bringing. Um, coming all the way down through. And I think if, if you come to the Ico Moon, it probably, there's a responsive. Okay, so it's got, Here's a, it's bringing in all the responsive stuff, 
it's bringing in the font, and you'll notice that it's bringing in the icon moon that does not come from Julie. It's coming right from here. And now it's going into doing all of these different just miscellaneous. Here's stuff that I want to do because this is my template and this is how I need it to work. Okay? Um, so if we then go, I'm going to go to terminal. And there are GUI ways you could do this, like I said. I'm just not going to go over all this stuff. And I'm going to go CD, and I need to go to, things in sight when I do this. Okay. <laughs> right. We will um maybe I can copy it. I just want to copy the link. All right, so I'm just going into that. I didn't want to go into the lesson. Um, okay, so now I'm into the CSS section of um, that that fold that that template, right? So I'm going to do this particular command that you see right there. Yes, less C, and it's going to be in dot dot slash less slash template. I should probably make a change to it, but you'll have to believe me, it's going different. And what that's going to do is let's assume we made a change to the less file, or we made a change to the variable file, which was called by the less file. And so we want to recompile, so I just go like that. And that's recompiled it. And if I go now to look at my CSS, you can see how it's got today's stamp on it. That I just recompiled it into there. And so if we go and we look at the CSS file, you can see that this is just a straight CSS file. It's just kind of long. So Andy, isn't there a way to kind of do that on the fly with JavaScript? And you, there are different ways you could. If you've got, um, you can. I think you can do it with Codex, mm -hmm. and there are different ones that you can set up to do it automatically. Mm -hmm. um, and I think on my work computer, I've got it set up so it'll do it that way. It's just, mm -hmm. I tend to like control over what I'm doing yeah. to a certain extent. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But like I said, next. Um, next June in the monthly meeting, I want to bring up a, a few of those different ways and, and show people how to use them mm -hmm. to do that. So it's, it's, that's one of those hands-on kind of thing that, that you really can't do in a one-hour session yeah, like yeah. this. So. so any... Yeah, what if you have like uh, some sub-pages yeah. in your template that they have special CSS that only this page or these pages have, mm -hmm. let's say a group of pages, because one page you could just put it in the header. But you have a group of pages that <coughs> use a special CSS, mm -hmm. but the CSS is needed for all the rest of the site. You would just import another CSS file for those pages in the template? Well, um, you know, if, if, have you created templates before for, for Joomla? Because, yeah, I have. Because you, know, you create one index.php file, and that's where you, you import those. So you need something to tell it, I want it for these pages or I don't. And the typical way you would, you would probably do that is when you'd want to have a, a class or an ID associated with those pages so that your CSS. Well, couldn't you use like the, the add CSS command that? You're just pre processing this ahead of time. Right. Okay, so. So yeah, that would be and outside of the CSS. And you're making one file. You're making one file that's going to get all of the pages. Okay, so then. All those classes 
that are just for those handful of pages are going to be in the CSS. That's how it is now. That's how it is now. Okay. Yeah. You know, because they're the only other option you would have would be to have some kind of an if on there to figure out that you're on those pages and not load those CSS. And then you'd be having multiple CSS files, which you could do with this. I mean, I'm showing you one way mm -hmm. of, so that you would create, um, you know, fewer number of CSS files, but there's no reason why you couldn't have two or three ultimate CSS files with just different imports or different things in them and, um, and use and call those separately as well. Okay. So, you had a question? I just have a question about the like, web developer tools. Mm -hmm. When you're, besides the nesting you said is difficult to read, how difficult is it to go back and edit in you know, the less file? The, the, like the variables and that, you know. I'm right, the, edit, the editing isn't, I, I don't find the editing difficult as long as I can locate it. Yeah, how do you And, do and I can locate it as long as, um, well, you have, you have two issues that, that come in. One is, is it memified or not? If it's memified, you know, kind of good luck. Um, but the big thing is, is to find a, a selector. And I then do, I'm, well, I'm usually in Eclipse, which I won't open right now because it takes too long to, to open. But, or is it open? Oh, it is open. So, what I can do in here is I select on jCurve and I can do in file search and now I, it's going to search all of those different things looking for that particular selector. So you could actually do it by just going into the GUI. You just, you'd want something that could select over multiple files if you're trying to find within the less um, because those are over so many files. So as long as you can do that, you know, so I would be selecting for something like, you know, Pound header space um, dot logo colon over and finding it. Obviously, if you've got something that is very common, it's wonderful. Definitely not as nice as, oh, here's my line number in this file. Any other? As far as compiling goes, I've got the variable.less file open. Mm -hmm. And if I don't change anything, like add gray light, yeah. name, yeah. If you make any changes, you have to compile. Yeah. No, Eclipse doesn't do anything. It, you have to go through some some kind of, of compiler, and that was the um, I did one in Terminal, which was doing the, the less.css. Um, if you go if you go to less. Or um, this this is where you can download um, the less.js, which is the one that you can can do on client side on the modern browsers. Or you could it works with the Node.js, and I showed you those two different methods. But this has the usage on how you would do it, the mix in, and it comes down and gives you different things. <coughs> Somewhere in here, it's got all those scopes recording, and ah, here are all the functions you've got. You were talking about being able to do the mods and stuff, so that these are all the, you can actually look and see what kind of units that are on there. You can do ceilings or floors to round up and round down to integers, uh, percentages, square roots, absolutes, cosines, tangents, pi, you know, um, all of those kind of fun things that you want to add in there. Uh, you can grayscale things if you want to. Oh! <laughs> Screen them. Multiply colors. You know, some of those things that you do on Photoshop, you can, yeah. you know, kind of do in here to play with your stuff. Overlays. Um, so this is doing way more than just compiling. This is, yeah, well, this, this is, is this is the stuff that Les can, these are the built-in functions that yeah. Les can do. Yeah. Then you also have to compile it, of course. Right. But, um, so this is what you need to bring down. And, and if you copy the less.css here, you can use it browser side. You need to download, like, Node.js or go to, like, the, the leaf place to get the PHP version and do 
that's much more complicated. You guys are and does that slow down? This, you must slow down your own. If you do, if you do a browser side, it'll slow it down. Mm -hmm. So you want to use the Node version. <laughs> but this is where you get all the information because these are the less guys. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so. Did that so the disadvantages. So if you do a browser side, you're not compiling it. Right, the browser side is using it interpretively. Yeah. So it interprets. So every time somebody goes and re you know, refreshes the page or comes to the page, it's compiling it right yeah. at that moment right. in time. Okay. Yeah. So that when you're taking all of these bazillion imports and bringing it in, mm -hmm. it's really difficult. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. So, but like I said, there are um, there are a lot of different. Um, less compilers um, so like this guy has got a thing on on some of the different oh uh, there's a mac less dot app lets you do it if you're on the mac and bless you live you know there are just a couple of different ones that you need you could use to compile it on your computer before so that you have a css file to then hand to um, your program if you're not working, I mean, if you're not trying to contribute back to Joomla, onto the Joomla core, then it doesn't matter what you use to compile the less one. You can pick whatever you want. It, in Joomla, we're, sort of, we're standardized on something that we're doing, like for code fixes or something there. Because if we don't, then they, the different compilers have different things with blank spaces. And so if we were to look to see what changed from here to here, it could be changing the whole file every single time. We want to be able to see what changes. So that's the only reason we use it, the same one if we're using it on the project itself. Mm -hmm. But if you're using it with Joomla, but you're using it on your websites, it makes absolutely no difference which ones you're doing. Mm -hmm. so. um, I think we've run out of time. So unless there are any final questions, um, we've got about 10 minutes. And then um, Brian is is going to be here and talking about some really cool secrets from the, the JCS and JCE and the JCE all the And then we're going to be doing our um, our drawings. But if you haven't seen what's on there, we've got a list up and the registration table. And it's some really nice things, you know, like three hundred dollar prize kind of kind of things are coming through right now, as well as some songs.